You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show. We're talking all about using AI to make experiences accessible and inclusive with Elsa Lean. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI show. We're talking all about using AI to make experiences accessible and inclusive with Elsa Lean. Elsa, how are you doing, my friend? Hi, yeah, I'm doing great, Seth. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for those that don't know you, tell us who you are and what you do. Um, sure. So I am a design program manager. I work on the Azure AI team. And my job's completely focused on accessibility and inclusive design. I love it. I feel so grateful. Um, basically, I work with our teams that build the products, so designers, program managers, engineers, and I make sure that everything we build is accessible so that people with disabilities can use it. So developers, data scientists with disabilities, they can build AI too. Um, and That's I amazing. do things like this, where I talk about how AI can be used for accessibility, which is also very fun. That's amazing. So for those that don't know, because I we hear the term yeah. accessibility, and for some reason, in my head at least, it's like, wheelchair, but that that's, can't be the extent of, like that sounds very shallow and naive on my part. Can you help educate us a little bit? Yeah, yeah, but good, great for asking questions. It's always good to ask, right? So basically accessibility is just making sure that everyone can access things. Um, so we normally talk about people with disabilities because they have many barriers to access, but it's really like, does everyone have equal access to education, um, to jobs? Uh, and mostly in my work, it's does everyone have equal access to technology, right? And that's so important when you think about like how per pervasive technology is right now, right? Like if I can't use WhatsApp or, you know, uh, watch this live stream or, you know, check my email. So uh, my work's related to the technology part, but accessibility is totally making sure people with wheelchairs can get into buildings as well. That's amazing. So you brought some slides. I, I think you're going to take us through them. Let me let me pop them up. I'm the slide guy today. So tell us a little bit about about this. Yeah, so basically it's the idea that um, there used to be this thing called the medical model of disability, which is the idea that disability is a is a personal health condition, right? And it's kind of a like a deficit, right? But now um, most people, and definitely at Microsoft, the way we look at it is disability isn't a personal health issue, but it's you are disabled by society or by systems and how they're designed, and you're disabled because, for example, the building only has steps and doesn't have a ramp. It's not because there's a problem with you, but it's because there's a problem with the way the system has been designed to exclude you. So the idea is disability is about a mismatch between what you're trying to do um, and what you're able to do, like basically due to a design of a system or a technology or something like that. Um, I see. And I think so, that's really powerful. So let me, because I, yeah, yeah ask questions. This, but I have, so uh, let's just say for me, for example, uh, there's, there's things that I have, like, for example, I wrecked my bike the other day and I hurt my knee. And so it's all skin and I'm walking around all hobbly. And it turns out that I was doing something this morning and the on-ramp was super helpful to me. Yes. At that moment in time, because it was, it, it felt like I almost had like a temporary or a transitory yeah. issue that caused some access. Does that, is that included in this? Yeah, that's perfect. Lead me on to my next slide, Seth. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It's like, we know what we're doing. Let's yeah. do it. So yeah, if you think about mismatches, definitely people with disabilities aren't the only people that, that experience them, right? So you can kind of think about disability as a spectrum. So like these are, this is something we came up with at, at Microsoft, like the spectrum between permanent, temporary and situational disability, right? So taking your wheelchair example, um, if someone's in a wheelchair, they're permanently disabled. If they, uh, you know, slipped and, you know, had a skiing accident, I guess is what this picture refers to and, and have a broken leg or have to use crutches for a bit, that's a temporary disability. And then, and that's you, I think, if you hurt your knee. Um, and then situational is like, um, you can't access the steps, not really for a temporary disability purpose, but purely situational in that moment. So that can be like, I'm wheeling a pushchair or uh, I'm wheeling a bicycle. That happens to me a lot. So, yeah. And this and is cool. Because I'm, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Cool. Go ahead. No, what, what was cool? Tell me what was cool. So what's cool about this is it makes me think about it differently because accessibility for some reason, and, and again, this is all naive to me. I, I'm all, pretend I'm the naive version of me. Disability was like, or accessibility was like someone in a wheelchair needs to get up the steps. But you're saying that accessibility is about really everyone having yes, good access exactly. to whatever software it is. And so this really, everyone wants accessibility. Yeah, and, and you can think about like, um, for example, sight as as a spectrum, right? Like, especially like, like you know, you, I think I think you have pretty poor vision, Seth. If you don't mind yes. me pointing it out, yes. you've mentioned that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, someone can be blind 
or or um, very low vision and they require a screen reader to be able to use websites, right? Or um, there's a huge spectrum, like I've got contact lenses in right now, right? That's an assistive technology. Without them, like I wouldn't really be able to see you very well or this slide. Um, mm. And I think you're you're the same, right? So it's a spectrum. No, we're not the same. Like my, my yeah. eyes are so bad that you know how you're like, you, let's go to the glasses place and they'll make you glasses an hour. No, my glasses take months because they got to hire some hobbits to forge the lens of power in the fires of Mount Doom. That's how blind I am. Like if I had my glasses on, I would start a fire kind of thing. And so that that's an example of a more permanent disability that I have that I use yeah. corrections yeah. to make everything else more accessible. Am I getting the vocabulary right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, basically, if we think about accessibility, it really applies to everyone. I think that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, one thing we didn't mention at the beginning is even like we're talking about the permanent disability part, that's a lot of people, right? Like one billion people worldwide have a disability is the estimate. It's one in five in the US. Um, a lot of them uh, can be hidden disabilities as well. So like, we're talking a lot about like wheelchair usage or people who are blind or have very, very poor vision. Um, also, we have uh, invisible disabilities such as neurodivergence, right? So you can be dyslexic um, or neurodivergent in another way, ADHD, autism, these all count as well. And a lot of them are undercounted. We have that, that's the permanent category. Then once we go into temporary and situational, it's basically everyone. Everyone's experienced some form of temporary disability in their life and countless times many situational. Okay, so can you give us an example of just a mundane accessibility thing so people can get there? Because I think when we think about it from a mundane perspective and then move it on to software, hopefully that there'll be a good transition. Do you have something to show yeah, us? Yeah, there? yeah, show us the next slide. We, we were kind of talking about this. This is one of my favorite ones. I use these all the time. Do you know what these are, Seth? Yeah, those are like the curb, like so you don't have to like jump over the curb to get onto the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are curb cuts. I use them all the time because I'm I'm often wheeling my bike around or, you know, people with push chairs, it's the same thing. Especially right now, it's really snowy in Vancouver. I don't know about Redmond, but these make it easier to get, get down and, and through the ice and the slush for sure. And so th these things are literally for everyone because... I mean, I'm, maybe I'm pushing a card or something or my, like, like you said, this is not just yeah, for really people in wheelchairs or for people that have crutches, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think now is a good time to like transition into, because we've been talking about general accessibility. Uh, let's move it now. Cause this is the AI show. What yeah. does this have to do with software and AI? Yeah. Well, if you think about, I can't remember what slide I have, but you can just put it up and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, so we were talking about mismatches, right? And it's like a yep. mismatch between a person and the system they're using. And if you think about our Azure AI tools, Seth, like look mm -hmm. at the middle line, right? Vision, speech, language, decision. Um, these are like basically human capabilities that you can add into a software and they can directly address mismatches, right? So, mm -hmm. and you can go to the next slide now. Um, there. Yeah, there so if I'm if I'm someone who's blind, right, the ability to recognize images and describe them to me, that's like a cognitive service, just wrap that right in and that makes images way more accessible. Same for speech recognition. If I um, have a mobility a disability and um, maybe I can't use the keyboard very efficiently, very efficiently, but I want to talk to my computer and, and lots of people find it easier to talk to their devices anyway, right? Like people use Siri all the time. That's another mm -hmm. example of makes things like it's very important for someone with a disability, but it's also incredibly useful for us, right? Being able to talk to Siri means you don't have to use your hands as much. And then natural language interaction, everyone loves talking to their computers. We're all about that at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, and so you're saying, if I'm understanding correctly, that AI could be like my contact lens for my yes. eyeballs. Yes, yes. Interesting, and so there's some accessibility thing. Like for example, I, if I have software where I require someone to type something in, I could just as easily add a button for people to push a button and talk into my text box. And now yeah. it's a lot easier for people to put information into a text box, for example. Yeah, especially with cognitive services, you just call an API and the AI does all the work for you. You don't have to build I your own see. model. Well, let me go back to this. Let me go back to the slide before because I think, I think, um, okay. So we have things that do vision, speech, language, decision, obviously open AI service. Are there examples of accessibility things that folks have done with some of these services that you'd like to call out? 
Yeah, there's loads of stuff. We have a slide on that too, Seth. I'm super oh, prepared yeah. with my, my little <laughs> slide briefcase. Although I have one thing before beforehand, okay. and I know you wanted to go in an order. So we okay. talked about like addressing mismatches, and that's like converting, right? So like I can convert speech to text or text to speech, and that can address a barrier. The other way that AI can help is efficiency, because it's helping all of us. And that's where OpenAI comes in, or many things like that. And the reason I included a picture of Stephen Hawking is because um, he basically controlled his keyboard with a muscle in his cheek, right? He had like a little switch that would be uh, affected by a muscle in his cheek. So he would have to type out. It took him a really long time to type things out. And, you know, the guy had a lot of smart stuff to say. Um, and he used predictive text, AI driven, actually swift key predictive text um, to make sure that, you know, so that he could type a little bit. And then the predictive AI would help him get there quicker to save lots of cheek muscle movements. Um, and predictive text is great for all of us just to like kind of harp on that message again. So it's yeah. kind of like addressing mismatches and then also efficiency, which we all love. I see. So just to summarize it, it's like there's the context lens situation with accessibility and AI that helps adapt my current capability with the needed capability in the software. And then there's the other one uh, for accessibility that helps people just be more efficient because there's a huge impedance mismatch between humans and computers Obviously, if you're yeah. a programmer, you have one way of solving. But if you're not a programmer, maybe these things, assistive technologies can help you be more efficient. Am I getting this yeah. right? Yeah. And even they can help developers be more efficient, too. I mean, we've seen GitHub Copilot, right? Mm, I see. So when we're looking at AI to help with accessibility, we can think of things to adapt regular human modalities or different human modalities into the computer, as well as helping humans just generally be more efficient. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two things I have in my mind as well. Yeah. Okay, that, that's cool. And so now the use examples. cases, right? Yeah. All right, let's go to that slide. Um, yeah, so these are these are just some of them, but these are the ones that, you know, we have loads of examples of people using them. You can see loads of logos on this slide. Um, like in our company, we use, uh, uh, we use speech to text for live captions everywhere, right? So in Teams, in Windows, uh, in, in Stream, but also lots of external customers using it too. Um, and those benefit, I mean, everyone. I, I think almost everybody uses captions at some point in their week, um, but they're very important for the deaf and hard of hearing to know what's going on. And they're pretty helpful if you're neurodivergent, and, and they're also really helpful if you forgot your headphones and you're on the bus, right? Um, content reading, that's like, oh, do you want to say anything, Seth? You popped up. Yeah, and I, I will yeah. say that, um, like, even when I'm watching my Netflix shows, yeah. I, I, we all, like, my kids started putting the captions on. And now I, I don't watch the shows without it almost at all. And the, yeah. the amount of comprehension that I'm getting is like double now. Like now like, right. oh, that's what they really said. Because I watch a movie afterwards. I'm like, oh, that's what they said. You know how we're always like singing the song wrong. And then we look at the lyrics. We're like, oh, I've, yeah, yeah. I've been singing well, that so, wrong. So in, in the Lean family household, when I was growing up, we were all big TV talkers. We talk over the TV all the time. So we always had the captions on because otherwise no one knew what was going on because we were always interrupting it. Hmm. So there you go. So yeah. that, that's an example of adapting a human modality so that we could comprehend better, maybe even be more efficient as well. But, yeah. All right. What were and the other yeah, ones? There's loads of others. So content reading is like, um, we there's a feature called Read Aloud in Edge or, or in Outlook and in Word, but that's uh, reading things out loud. So um, we're also, actually, that's a good teaser for next week, but um, for the second part of the accessibility two-part special, we have we have a use case for content reading and, and turning uh, written text into audiobooks, which helps with accessibility for people with vision disabilities. Yeah, and I, I have found that like, even when I'm just driving in my car, the modality, f my, my access to being able to read something now is zero. I can't read stuff while I'm driving. It's against the law. Number yeah, one. yeah, no, you definitely hey. shouldn't. Please don't. Yeah. But now that there's this, there's audiobooks, I go through so many books listening to them. And I used to think, oh, that's not reading a book. And I'm like, no, it is. That's, that's reading funny. a book. It's just I'm learning, I'm using a different, it, there's an adaptation for my current driving disability, which is I cannot use my eyeballs to read. Yeah, we have an Outlook feature called Play My Emails. Um, and it was originally designed with blind people to make sure it worked great for them to listen to their emails. Um, but now, like the marketing that we had for it was you could drive your car and listen to your emails on the way into work. So Yeah, I saw that too. So, all right, yeah. any any final things that you want to add? Uh, and, and then maybe we tease up what we're doing next time. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all really cool. Nothing nothing more to add, like just, just to read out what's there. Translation, that's accessibility for people who don't speak uh, the, the language in the, that's being used. 
voice control, we all love that, right? You get it. We, we all love all of these tools, right? Describing images is a cool one. So that's computer vision is getting really, really good now. That's all I have to say about it. And yeah, the ability to describe images is pretty great. The coolest and I'm demo realizing the I pictures do. on this slide are, are not matching the thing. So I'll change that for next time. Oh, that's okay. I will tell you that the coolest demo that I do uh, just with standard AI, because my mantra is you can participate in AI just by using software, is when I turn on captions for PowerPoint. Like, I, yeah. and, and this, look, let me do it. Um, let's do it right oh. now. Let's, let's, let's do a demo of me doing it right now. So if I go like this, and I use always use subtitles. I could I could even like for example I could even speak in Spanish, and it comes out in English. What, let me show you. This is absolutely bananas. Miren, ahora estoy hablando español, pero lo que van a ver es van a ver algo en inglés. Oops. Wow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Van a ver algo en inglés. Miren, estoy hablando en español, pero está saliendo todo en inglés. That's cool, right? It's very cool. And that's just a standard accessibility thing for people that don't speak English. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. And that's literally in in uh, in PowerPoint. You can see right here, you can, you have like a from and a to. It's absolutely bananas. If you've if you've ever go into PowerPoint and do this. It's it's really cool. And the thing about this is I've given talks in foreign countries and I felt terrible. I've always tried to learn like a word or two. Mm -hmm. But there is a there is there is a mismatch in comprehension that needs to be adapted, and AI can totally help with that. All right, so there's one more slide, I think. Tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah, so um, it hasn't. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so the thing I wanted to mention, like you know, talking about innovation is so cool. Bang these AI technologies into your apps, and like you know, have them convert these mismatches. But something really important is this disability rights mantra called "Nothing about us without us," um, and that's about you, you kind of get the idea, but it's like, don't design solutions that affect the disability community or really any community without consulting them, right? Do your research, ideally work with people in the community to design these solutions together and, and you know, compensate them. Um, but the, I have a picture here, which is an example of um, the sign language glove, um, which is a, an example and, you know, it's too much to go into now, but um, this isn't something that the deaf community in general is in favor of, where anyone with like a real understanding of sign language would understand that, you know, you use your face, um, it's it's about movement. There's, it's a lot more than just the hands. And like, you know, it's, it's a really fun tech problem to solve if you're an engineer, right? But like talk to the community, understand more about, you know, how, how they really communicate in this case. And and yeah, it's it's very important to include the people that you're building a solution for. That's what I, I wanted to leave with, with saying that for sure. And, and that's super important because I, I worked with deaf people before and I started to learn a little bit of sign language and awesome. the amount of facial expression that's involved. If you did, if you've never seen it or if you've never participated and you're trying to make solutions, you might be mistaken in thinking that it's only the hand. Yeah. Oh, I just Which, saw my brother pops on the chat. Hi, Pierre. <laughs> hello. Uh, so any final, any final slides? Looks like you have a speech accessibility project. Tell us oh, about yeah. this. We can, we can, we can talk about that very quickly, but you know, that we talked about how cool the speech AI is. If it doesn't work for you, right, and it doesn't recognize your voice, then it's no good. And so we know that there's, you know, we have to make the AI inclusive as well, right? Like if you have a deaf voice, for example, you might speak differently if you've never heard voice. Um, or if you have a mobility impairment, you might um, have, you know, so we call it disarth disarthric speech. You might have different speech patterns. We're working to make sure the AI is inclusive because otherwise everything we said earlier, like what's the use, right? We need to make sure we build the actual models inclusively. So, so we're working with, you can look up more about it, the Speech Accessibility Project. We're working with all the big tech companies to, to figure this one out. That is amazing. So any call to actions to finish up? Yes. Um, one last slide, promise, then you can send me away, Seth. Last slide is check out the Ability Summit. This is such a cool event. It's a one-day virtual Microsoft event, all free, um, on March the 8th. Um, you can register at aka.ms slash ability. Um, and here there'll be all, you know, way more detail into these conversations. We'll talk about disability inclusion. Um, we're even talking about policy and things like that, but also a lot of tech stuff. So we'll be talking about AI for accessibility. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a breakout session on generative AI that will be kind of cool because we didn't even touch on that today. Seth. That's right. That's um, right. So definitely check out the Ability Summit. It's going to be awesome. Fantastic. And do you have a blog you can uh, send people to? Oh, I do have a blog. Yeah. So we have a link for that as well. So aka.ms slash Azure AI. 
A11Y, because there's 11 letters between A and Y in accessibility. Um, ah. that's, a, that's a tech thing. Um, yeah, read about the, the six use cases that we have for using Azure AI just straight out using an API for accessibility. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us, Elsa. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me, Seth. It's been awesome. And thanks for listening to everything I had to say. I had a lot I wanted to share with everyone. So yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for watching, my friends. We've been learning all about using AI to make experiences accessible and inclusive with Ailsa. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you Bye, next everyone. time. Take care. See ya.